It's been a whole week since I've been using my Prusa, and how's my experience? Well, let's find out. Come with real, it's the next episode. I've spent about a week with this printer and I was quite keen to share that experience with you guys. Now, how can I already improve on other people's reviews? We've had Tom, the main go-to guy for all 3D printers, Joel, the 3D printing nerd, who was actually chaperoned by Joseph himself to get on with the unboxing and get on with building it. We've even had Bob at I Like To Make Stuff and he was actually gifted a printer by Prusa for the purposes of reviewing. Well, here at Nerville, we do things a little bit differently. I wanna share with you the knowledge I've gained from building this, the problems that I had, and also how can we go about improving that experience during build and use of this product. So, let's start from the very beginning and talk about the build. This manual is excellent. In all of the 3D printers that I have come across, Actually having a handbook and instruction manual that tells you how to put something together is absolutely epic and it's part of the reason why this printer was so easy to build. But I would go further and say that use the PDF file that is available from Prusa website because it's easier to zoom into those pictures because at times a small handbook like this with pictures that are very very small are quite difficult to decipher. So use the PDF to explore the pictures in more detail. In fact, here's a hot tip for you guys and girls. Mika Sanchez on YouTube has created a full 3D assembly of the Prusa i3. Now it's not the Mark II, but the components and the assembly is very identical and it can be very useful for referencing some very technical bits that uh, you might struggle with. So check it out and I'll link it at the description below. Going back to the manual, it's imperative that you do not miss any steps in the manual. Even if you already wised up as to how this printer goes together, don't miss any steps, follow them one by one. I would even go further to say use a pencil and cross out the sections that you have covered. Take the time, count out the pieces, find the components that are required. At times it really does help to actually lay out the parts that you require in the manner that they're going together, then create those assemblies. This will both easily help you to understand what parts are required and they're at hand and lay out all your components in separate sections. The bags themselves are very well labeled and they indicate what stage of the build that you are at what the parts are for and even the label on the front have scale drawings of the screws and the nuts that are required so it's so easy for you to grab that screw put it up against the label and then work out what screw size that is one of the biggest uh, issues that the printer had was the level of noise it can make so um, i decided early on that i'm going to use something called igis bearings now igis produce a dry line bearing and they run much more quieter than the LM8W self-feeding bearings. And from personal experience, I have had ex experience with dry line, especially with my CTC, but I would have probably gone a bit further and said that it's probably worth investigating the bro sintered bronze bushing to use with this printer. While we're on the subject of bushing, the way that these are fixed to the carriage is using a tie wrap. Now, that's a cheap solution and it does work, but it creates a small amount of movement, which could be as much as one millimeter. And that small movement can be even more amplified in the maximum travel of the bed in the Y axis. A better solution would be to fix that securely using a bracket of some sort. And the bracket would sit within the slot of the Y carriage. And so I've designed a bracket. Hopefully it will, the links will be available in the description as and when I finish uh, the design. And the design will be both usable for the LM8Ws, uh, the Aegis bearing, as well as the sintered bronze bushing should you want to go and take any of those options. As we're talking about the underside and we're talking about minimizing vibration and noise from the Prusa, they also provide these felt pads. Now typically I use this on furniture to prevent my floor from getting damaged from sliding chairs and tables. But there is a better solution than using felt pads 
and that is using rubber stops. And I've got a plentiful supply of rubber feet that are from recycled laptop cells. If you haven't seen that episode, I'll link it at the end of this episode. But there is a solution available on Thingiverse, and that comes in the form of these 3D printable suspension feet, which I have heard, not tested, work extremely well. To keep my Prusa looking very professional, I'll stick with the rubber feet, or I might combine the two together and have a hybrid rubber feet and suspension acting together. And another thing, don't take anything for chance. Check every single part that you're going to assemble. Check for its straightness, its trueness. Is it bent? Uh, is it the right length? I understand that Prusa probably take considerable effort in providing these parts um, as, as they have designed, but even I suffered from a part that was truly bowed. And I'll explain what that is later in the video. For the Y carriage, you have to make sure that that item is truly square and flat. Even if it's one or two millimeters out, I wouldn't take the risk of leaving it as that. Use a tape measure from corner to corner. Those measurements should be identical in length. It's paramount because it will have a knock-on effect as you print and even though that this has got bed calibration it still helps to keep it truly square. So to help you assemble the y-axis carriage more accurately download and 3d print this y-axis helper. It's available on Thingiverse and it will allow you to keep both rails totally parallel to each other as well as square. Now I must be the most unluckiest person in the whole of the world because I ended up with the only Prusa printer I believe that had a bowed heated bed. Quite unbelievable, I know. And it actually threw me for a long time. It, it, I couldn't get it to calibrate. The problems were so bad with this printer that uh, from so many misprints that I actually ended up using a whole reel of white PLA. Even my bucket couldn't even take it anymore, which I wasn't too happy about. It was bowed to the point where two opposing corners there was a difference of five to seven millimeters. Now I don't know how that became bowed because that's a glass filled silicon bed which is extraordinarily thick and it should never have been bowed but I seem to have landed myself with the one that was bowed. And it's testament to Prusa who have an excellent support department that came in and helped me through this. And in fact they sent me a replacement bed. And just a quick thank you to Monica, Dan and Grayson for helping me through this issue. So there are a few other components that you may consider once your Prusa is up and running. Another item I'd highly recommend but I haven't actually used myself is a cable chain. The reason I haven't used it is because incorporating it means that your spool holder has to be used off your machine. And I actually prefer where mine is because it saves on precious work surface space. Why don't you check out Nilabean, he's actually installed it on his Prusa and he talks a little bit about it. Plus I think he's got a great channel which has great potential and I wish him great success on his new channel. So hopefully in the very near future I will install Octoprint on this Prusa. Now what is Octoprint? Octoprint is an open source web based host for 3D printers. It's a web based interface that allows you to upload G-code to the 3D printer. And it's just another interface for me to easily 3D print parts without having to use an SD card. And should I do follow through with that, I'll cover an episode on that should you guys want me to. For me personally, I also want to add a GoPro mount onto the actual heated bed so that I can capture time lapse during 3D model printouts, which I always think look awesome. So enough with the negatives and ripping this machine apart and putting down Prusa. How dare I? They're a lovely company. When things went wrong, they were there to support me. They have built a very good machine and it's open source for crying out loud and is there for us to improve. So let's not knock them down too much. It's a lovely machine. Go out and buy one. I highly recommend it. And if you do buy Prusa, because of my reviews, tell them Nerd will send you. Why? Because, well, it's another way of me saying thank you to them. Maybe I'll get another 3D printer. So you find out all the issues, you've actually assembled a perfect machine, everything is spot on. How will it print? Well, you'll have to wait till the next episode to see how well this printer has performed. As well as further recommendations to improve your experience using the Prusa i3 Mark II. Do 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 do
Go, 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 go